Hello everyone, my name is Daggett, this is Daggett Designs and welcome back to a brand new video. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to hand paint a traditional piece of tattoo flash. Now if you're not yet comfortable drawing your own flash, I will leave a link to where you can download the line work for this exact illustration. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and pause the video, download the line work and trace it out onto some watercolor paper and that way you can follow along. All right, so to start this one off, it is a traditional design, so I wanna do a coffee stain. Now, a lot of people use actual coffee for that, and that's fine. I like to use transparent raw sienna, mixed down with some water. So these are Liquitex acrylic inks. They're gonna sienna, and I like to add some water to it to help dilute it a little bit. And this is gonna act as our coffee stain. So I'm gonna take a large watercolor brush. This is a number eight, and I use uh, Taclon synthetic brushes. And we're using cold press watercolor paper because I really like the grain that that has. Now I'm soaking some of that color into my brush and then I'm just gonna start adding it over the top of my design to give it a coffee wash appearance or a tea stain appearance, which is really typical with these classic style designs. Now you can go ahead and coffee stain your entire page if you'd like. I like to just work around the outside of my flash and I like to do it in sort of a messier, haphazard kind of way. I don't want it to look super, super neat. I'm pretty much just adding a, a thick outline of the coffee wash to my design and filling the inside with, this, with the same color. Now you can go. Okay, once you're happy with the color there, you're gonna leave this to dry and then we can get into black shading. Now, once your coffee or tea stain has dried, we can go ahead and start our black shading. I'm using Liquitex Acrylic Carbon Black. You can go ahead and use whatever kind of uh, dry, uh, permanent drying black medium that you'd like. I recommend some sort of India ink or drawing ink or an acrylic ink. You definitely don't want to use black watercolor paint because as soon as you put your colors over the top of it, the black watercolor will reactivate and you'll have a massive mess on your hands. Now, I'm using two different brushes, a number five and a number six. Uh, both of these tackle on synthetic. These are just cheapy brand watercolor brushes in, in this case, so you don't need to stress too much about the supplies. And uh, So what I like to do is take my number five brush, which is the slightly finer tip, dip it into my carbon black, and then I use the edge of my palette here just to sort of try to control how much black is actually on my brush. And then I'll essentially apply black where I want it. And in the case of a traditional design like this, I'm pretty much going to try to shadow areas that I would assume would typically be darker, uh, even though we don't work with a direct light source. I then take my blending brush, dip it into my glass, and then I like to just run it through my lips to make sure that there's no excess moisture in there and I can control the amount of liquid. And then I'm just gonna gently run it back and forward along the very edge of my black there. And what that's gonna do is draw across some of that pigment across the page. And this is gonna create a feathered effect uh, to where the edge of your black goes from being very harsh to being a lot softer. So I'll give you another example here. We have a very hard edge of our black there. I'll take a bit of water, drag it across that edge and sometimes you need to go back and forward a few times and it will feather that edge out and give it a much softer look. And this is what they call that traditional spit shaded look. So now I'm just filling in the back here. Something really important to note here is that I don't want my black and the black of the wing there to clash. So I'm gonna leave this fine little strip across the top of the back there and that's gonna act as a little highlight. Now again, we don't want it to be super harsh. So I'll take a little bit of water and I'll just feather that edge out so that it's not so solid. And we can continue. Now you can go all the way to the end with black, but I'm gonna cut it on this sort of angle. Take a bit of water and blend it out towards the end. And I'll do the same thing for the other side of the tail. Now we're going to do either end of our banner where it curls around. So a bit of black on the left side there. And blend it out. 
And now I can turn my page around again, just to give myself a better angle and a bit more leverage on my stroke. Painting the other side a little bit. And then feather the edge out very gently, like so. Now the last little bit of black shading I'm gonna do is gonna be in the leaves. And I like to make sure this is a very, very small amount of black shading because our leaves are gonna be colored. And I'm only gonna do it in the larger leaves. So a little bit of black towards the very bottom of the leaf. And I like to sort of do it on an angle and then feather it out slightly. So you can see it's a very, very small amount. So to wash your brush out, basically, I like to just tap it on the bottom of my glass, shake it side to side a little bit, and then I'll just brush it off uh, on a piece of material or uh, run it through my lips to draw the moisture out. And that's going to give you a pretty clean brush to work with. Okay, once your black shading has dried, we can move on to some colors. Uh, I like to work uh, all areas of one color and then move on to the next one. This just makes it a little bit clearer and it means you don't have to wash your brush out a million times. So I'm going to start off with red. And in this case, red is the belly color for our bird. So I like to just take a bit of that red pigment, come into this belly area. And you can sort of tell when there's too much pigment on the page because it'll bubble up and uh, sit on top of the page instead of soaking in. And so you just need to experiment and find how much pigment you like to have on there. The more pigment there is, the easier it will blend. However, you can, you can over blend these inks and end up with a real mess on your hands. So I like to paint up to about there, take a bit of water and just feather that out and work it up into the face a little bit. That way we soften the red and have a nice soft glow around that face. And then I'll take a bit of that red and go into the base of the tail as well, just a little bit. and then blend that out into the tail feathers a little bit, like so. And I'm also gonna use red for the flowers. Now they're actually supposed to have a look, so, sort of a pink look, uh, but we're gonna come into the base of each petal with red, and then gently blend that out towards the outside of the petal. And this will achieve a slightly pink look. So they'll be a little bit more uh, dark and saturated towards the middle and they'll look lighter and slightly more pink towards the outside of your petals. And now we're going to be working with yellow. In this case, there's not actually any blending to do. It's all going to be solid yellow areas. You could of course blend if you'd like to uh, certain things, but I'm going to be doing the front of my wings a solid yellow. Like so. And I did get asked, uh, you know, where do you decide to leave skin breaks? Where, you know, where in a full design like this, you can see that I'm doing the top of these wings solid yellow with no breaks and no blending. How do you make that decision? Uh, I think it's all just up to your personal preference. It depends how you want the illustration to look. Uh, the only thing I would say is that everything needs balance. So try to keep things balanced and try not to put too many or too little skin breaks or leave too much solid color, like wall-to-wall -wall colors, like our yellow here, and not enough room to breathe. So I just try to keep it even. I've also done yellow in the center of my flowers. Now I'm washing my brush out again. And now from here, I'm going in with my green. This is my Thalo green, again from Liquitex. All the colors I'm working with today are from Liquitex, and they are all acrylic inks. Now I'm coming in and just coloring in my leaves. Now, again, you could leave skin breaks or blend out these leaves. In this case, I'm just doing solid green. There's a bit of shading uh, in the base of the leaves that's gonna help give them a little bit of sort of form and shape. So I don't really feel the need here to leave any breaks. Now we're nearly there. There's just one last thing to do. We're gonna use some transparent raw ember to do our banner. Now, I'm not gonna color in the whole banner with this color. We're gonna use this as an accent to the shading we already did. It's like going to my transparent raw Ermba, which has an earthy brown sort of tone. Go over the top of the black shading that we did on the corner of the banner here, following the same shape as our black shading. And then I'm gonna use the same technique to feather and blend that out. Like so. Now we can come to the other side. 
and essentially do the same thing. Now, as you can see here, the main part at the middle of the banner there, the main portion of the banner is going to be left open. No color in the middle there, or in this case, just the coffee wash. And so essentially what we've done is we've used the, uh, if this was being tattooed, we've used the skin tone of whatever person we're tattooing to make up the color of the banner. But so that it doesn't look like their skin, we've added black shading and then a slightly darker tan color or a darker brown color. And then we've gently blended that into the skin tone. And what this is gonna do is help separate it from the skin so it doesn't look unfinished. Okay guys, and that's basically it. That's my little tutorial on how to spit shade uh, using Liquitex acrylic inks to complete a traditional piece of tattoo flash. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought and what you'd like to see in future videos. I'd love to get some suggestions. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.